In this video, I show you special places to stop on your South Island road trip between Lake Tekapo and Dunedin. As a tour guide and a travel designer, I've been through these locations many times. You're going to get local insider information to help with your New Zealand trip planning. My name is Michael, so let's get started. So my first recommendation is when you start traveling from Tekapo, don't go through the East Coast Road, but actually go through the Inland Route. So you go through Omarama. The distance is 3 hours 50 minutes, which is around about 314 kilometers. As usual, you need to calculate 10 to 15 percent more with Google Maps. So when we look at the map, we can see Lake Tekapo here on the eastern side of the Southern Alps. We've got the Southern Alps here going right through the South Island. Um, it's about 800 meters high. It's an alpine plateau. Uh, it's called the Mackenzie Country, and it's located at Lake Tekapo. Uh, it's often used uh, for a day trip into Mount Cook here. Mount Cook National Park is up here. It's a, it's a good hour's drive from Lake Tekapo. I will do a separate video about the um, Mount Cook National Park and the day trip options. I also have done a video coming from Christchurch to Lake Tekapo, and I put that link into the subscription box below. Uh, plus, I've got another video done between Lake Tekapo and Queenstown, so check that out as well. So I want to focus today on a specifically that stretch from Amarama going down to um, Dunedin. So let's go quickly through some key locations you don't want to miss between Lake Tekapo and Omarama. Here is the Lake Tekapo Airport. Um, this is a, um, a good location to doing scenic flights, either fixed wing or helicopter. Uh, further down south, we've got Irishman Creek, which is a cool place. The, the jet boat, the New Zealand jet boat was invented here. Again, I got more details in my previous video going between Lake Tekapo and Queenstown. And we got those channels here, which connect the Tekapo channel, collecting Lake Tekapo uh, with a huge lake, Pukaki. Uh, it's all used for hydro uh, electricity production. Uh, we've got here a couple of viewpoints you want to stop by, uh, Lake Pukaki viewpoint, beautiful. Um, and yeah, then we're heading further south. There's a biplane flights. Again, more information in the previous video. But yeah, we're traveling all the way south. There's a couple of cool spots. Um, we have a salmon farm. Um, so keep that in mind, the salmon farm here. So once we arrive in um, Omarama, uh, this is a good place to stop and refresh to get fuel. But there's also uh, hot tubs. Um, I'll just show you briefly those ones. Um, it's quite cool, especially if you're traveling in the, uh, the winter season to um, get warmed up. As usual in the Southern Alps, there are quite a lot of uh, hot springs. So they're obviously using that hot water. So that's just before you come into Amarama on the right hand side. But what we want to do now, we're heading uh, from Amarama, we're going towards the East Coast now. And uh, this is SH83. So this is, uh, as I mentioned before, it's a barren country. Um, it's high country still, but you slowly make your way the uh, East Coast of the South Island. So you're passing all these huge uh, lakes again. They're all part of a, um, a hydro system. Another very popular uh, activity in the area is the cycle trail. So this gives you kind of an idea of the kind of location we're talking about is um, often thyme, tussock grassland, no trees at all. So it's, uh, it's a very different scenery than you would have experienced in other parts of the South Island. So when traveling along those lakes, Lake Aviemore, as often in the South Island road trips, you get across uh, stop points where you can um, enjoy the views, make some pictures. Here's one of them. So they're quite often, as you see, the, the, the roads are country roads. It's uh, one lane, one direction. Some people are a little bit silly. <laughs> now, this is one of the dams uh, where they produce electricity throughout the South Island. Most of the South Island electricity is actually uh, transferred over to the North Island. So it, it's a very, very important um, part of our economy, having those huge lakes 
for electricity. So here's another dam, Aviemore Dam Lookout. Um, again, I would encourage you to stop at these places. So yeah, I mean, classic uh, scene, you have the, the sheep in front of you, they look like merino sheep. Um, you've got the power lines and you've got the, the dam in the background here. Um, often there's a bit of description, a bit of information on the site, which is uh, really interesting to, to understand what is going on here with the power production in the South Island. So uh, we're following now the White Taggy River Valley and there are little townships um, like Kuro. So we've got a couple of vineyards here as well. Uh, the White Taggy Valley is famous for uh, really some boutique wines. We've got uh, River Tea Wines right located on the road. It's a great place to, to stop, have wine tasting if you want to do, or they do even uh, lunch, lunch platters. So this is uh, really, really boutique very small scale. Uh, so now you're traveling down the Waitaki Valley, and again, there, there are plenty of places you want to maybe stop. Like here's one place, Takiroa Mary Rock Art. Let's have a look at this. So often these places are easily missed. So you want to be aware of this. Like here is a car park and you can actually walk into this um, area. Um, it's protected um, because those rock paintings are obviously very fragile. So you can actually see them. Um, when there's a bit of description here as well. But if you look closely, you can actually see those uh, uh, paintings, rock paintings, which are hundreds of years old. So they must be seven, eight hundred years old. So this is one of the key highlights. You want to make sure you stop when you're traveling down the Waitaki River. So just over the bridge from Dundrun, there's another um, rock art site you want to be aware of. And I'll just show you some more pictures here. So isn't it fascinating to have those ancient um, expression of uh, life in this area? The Mary population came around about seven, 800 years ago uh, from the um, Society Islands into New Zealand and the South Island tribes, they were much smaller than the North Island tribes. So interesting place to stop. This road is also a connection into Central Otago. This goes over Danzy's Pass. Um, you might be interested to have a look into that. Danzy's Pass is over here. So you would finishing up basically uh, towards Alexandra on the other side of this mountain range. But there's a couple of other sites you may be interested. Um, here is Elephant Rock. Um, again, a stunning location. Uh, to walk around and experience those amazing rock formation. It's a heritage trail, so it's all protected. Again, lots of information about it, reading up about it, but many people passing those places and rush through, so don't do that. So a little bit further along is also another fossil place. Yeah, depends on your interest, obviously, if you want if you have the time. Normally, as we've seen before, it's around about four hours between Lake Tekapo and Dunedin, but really you want to calculate with all these stops, you want to calculate between five and six hours. I'll show you a couple of other places uh, along the coast, uh, coastal road soon, you don't want to miss either. So when you coming out of the Waitaki Valley, you will be joining FH1, which is the main highway on the east coast of the South Island. One place you really want to stop is the next big village or city, I should say, Oamaru. And there's a few places I would suggest you to stop and uh, maybe for lunch or maybe for afternoon tea, but one of them is the, the Whitestone Cheese Place. This is a cool little um, spot where it's a famous cheesery, so they are award-winning cheeses. You can taste the platters, you can have even lunch, they have uh, coffee, etc. So this is something to keep in mind. Um, also, when you're heading further south into the main part, this is basically the central business district. But what you want to do, you actually want to go here into that old harbor area. So it is on the southern side of, um, of Oamaru. Oamaru, just for your information, used to be a very important uh, port for agriculture products, as well as in the gold rush days in the 1816, 1880s. Uh, there's a few places, um, Really interesting. So here is one that's called the Steampunk. 
HQ headquarters. This is a quirky little art place with all sorts of things um, outside and inside uh, put together. Some would say junk, but it's it's basically um, converted into art. Like you get this old steam engine, so there's much more to discover even inside this building. Look at that and and Zeppelin even uh, constructed here as a piece of art. The next place you really want to go down this road here, um, the Harbour Road, um, and the, it's called the Oamaru Victorian Prison. So this is where the old buildings are, the old storage facilities. But what's happening now is you've got a bakery here, which is still still in operation. Um, beautiful, beautiful bread. Um, and then you have these old former hotels, a lot of old buildings. Uh, you've got galleries, you've got a book binder, um, obviously churches as well. But this is the part in Oamaru. Here's a gallery. You can go upstairs, uh, beautiful, all sorts of art. So I highly recommend going there and to check out Oamaru uh, when you're coming out, heading towards the Dunedin. You may have heard about the Oamaru Blue Penguin Colony. So this is something, if you're interested in that, I would recommend you to stay overnight in Oamaru uh, because the penguins are actually out during the day and they're coming back kind of late afternoon, evening, depending on the on the times of the year. But uh, the smallest penguin in New Zealand, uh, you know, um, uh, the, the little blue blue penguin, but there's also other um wildlife here, the shags, the cormorants, uh, you have seals and sea lions and sometimes even seal elephants all along the coast here going right down to Dunedin uh, to the Otago Peninsula where we're heading towards today. So right, once we depart Oamaru, we're heading further south on the main highway and the next place we really want to stop is Muraki Boulders. This is a, a famous place where these sculptures or these huge marble kind of uh, <laughs> boulders uh, located on the beach. They're supposed to be 60, uh, 65 million years old. Part of them is uh, carbon. The other part is limestone. They've been basically buried in the, in the dunes for, for millions of years. And during, you know, over the time, the, the sea has washed them out and exposed them to the beach. So here's a classic example. You can see it's partly still covered in the in the in the in the sand, uh, but it will be exposed at some stage with the uh, with the tides coming in and the water washing it out. So that's Moraki Boulders. Uh, there's a cafe place as well, toilet facility. So you want to make uh, you want to be aware of that. If you have still a bit of time left, then you might want to head out to the uh, Katiki uh, Point Lighthouse. Um, it's one of these places. There are lots of really cool sites around. Or you want to stop here. You can see along the road, you're really traveling along the, uh, the ocean. So here's another few points you might on a beautiful day, you might want to take advantage of that and, you know, don't rush it through to Dunedin, but actually stop in these places. So, yeah, we're now heading down towards uh, Dunedin. Uh, Dunedin is one of the biggest cities in uh, New Zealand. It's very Scottish influence. A lot of Scottish settlers came here. In fact, Dunedin, the word Dunedin is actually the Gaelic for Edinburgh. And Dunedin has... Uh, not only the steepest roads in New Zealand has one of the, the key universities, but also this Otago Peninsula, which is um, a key site for visitors to visit the albatross colony and the yellow-eyed penguins on some of the beaches in the eastern side. So I will do a specific video on that because there's so much to see and so much to explore in the need alone. So... In any case, you want to have a couple of nights if you stay in the Eden at least to really make, make use of that to explore all these cool places. So as you can see, there are lots of places to discover between Lake Tekapo and the Eden. Hope you enjoyed this video. It was helpful for your overall itinerary planning. Please subscribe to get more videos about road travel and itineraries in general for New Zealand. And put any questions or feedback in, your comment, in the comments field below and see you in the next video.